Hey, welcome back. Uh, when we left off, we had a video where we had had some leases roll over. Now what I'm going to have to do is have some leases where I start the cash flow, basically, uh, leasing up a couple spaces, and then do some basic valuation. So if you remember, last time we were messing around with this, we had something that said, hey, compare the current date to the expiration date, and then it's before then, use this value, and it's after then, use this value. Um, so now we're gonna do pretty much the same thing, but instead of comparing the current date to the expiration date, we're gonna compare the current date to the start date. And then we're gonna say, if the current date is less than or equal to, is less than, I should say not equal to, if less than the start date, and then put in a zero, otherwise do the rent roll, basically take the square footage for the tenant, multiply it by the cash flow. So I'm gonna do that. And in this case, I'm gonna make sure that E17 uh, has a dollar sign in front of it. Basically lock the column, but not the row. And I'm gonna take that and copy that across. And now we should see the rent kicks in in January 24. And in the same way, copy it down by one, copy, paste, there it is. So now January, July. So cool, so we have slightly different formulas. We have one formula for the space that's currently occupied, which is comparing what they're paying now to what they could be paying. And then we have a different number for space that's vacant to say, hey, we don't make any money now, but later when we do, it rolls over at some amount. Um, cool, so now we can do some basic, very basic valuation. What do we need to do to do valuation? And again, uh, this is pretty basic, right? So this is, at this point, we've got uh, some sort of, uh, that would be like uh, potential gross revenue. We're gonna need some vacancy. We've not put in any vacancy whatsoever. Here, let me just collapse this. I don't have to, but to collapse this, I could hide it if that makes me happy. Barring that, I could get fancy with it. I could be like, I'm gonna do like a plus symbol or something, you know, to like group the data or something. Um, I don't, I mean, I could do that, sure, I'll group it. So here, like I group it under here under outline and now I can like expand or contract. Here, I'll just contract that. So we're gonna have a vacancy rate. Again, we don't have really much in the way of assumptions here, but I'm gonna call this the assumptions page because I gotta call it something. And let's have an assumptions rate. We'll have a vacancy rate, vacancy and credit loss. And I'll say that's 5%. And this is a pretty basic vacancy and credit loss, but you know, gotta walk before you can run. So I'm gonna say that that's going to take this and multiply it by that. And I'm gonna paste it across. I'm then gonna do this plus that, and that's gonna be my effective gross revenue. And I'll copy that across. Cool. Now I've got my operating expenses. Now, it says here for operating expenses that it was $175,000. Now this, of course, foolishly was put in as just a typed number. Let me break that out a bit. Because I can. And we haven't said anything about expense reimbursements yet, but again, I'm gonna get to that. And I'm gonna mark off that I've done leasing up vacant spaces, but I'm gonna put on things to work on next time uh, I'm gonna move basic valuation up and I'm gonna say that we need to put in operating expense recoveries. 
This is kind of how I keep track of my to-dos, basically, like, where am I on things. So in this case, my OPEX is going to be this amount divided by 12. And then I'm going to have my net operating income. And again, we're really very basic right now. And we'll do this minus that. Cool. Okay. All good stuff. And now what I got to do is I've got to do something where I say, well, let's um, let's uh, value value the thing. Basically, I need a cap rate, and I need some sales expenses. So I'm going to do a cap rate, and I'll say it's an eight cap because I can and some sales expenses. And I'll put in, say, 3%. Obviously, that's going to vary based on the market, the size of the asset, all kinds of good information like that. It depends, right? But again, I'm using some assumptions because i got to get the conversation going here. Now, if that's my cash flow, often I like to do my valuation stuff on a separate tab. So I'm going to have a valuation tab just to figure out what the heck's going on. So in this case, I've got my NOI year six, and there are a lot of ways to do this, but I'm going to do this the most basic of ways and just basically go to months 61 to 72. Again, I could build some sort of like some offset or H lookup or something funky, but let's be primitives about it because I can. I've got my cap rate, which again was my eight cap. And let me make that bigger so I'm not blinding everyone in the audience. I'll divide this by that. I always find this so therapeutic. And that is my sale price. Sweet. Okay. So let's see what this looks like from a valuation standpoint. So um, what I would do is I'd go here and I'd say, well, let's do unlevered and levered, right? So my unlevered valuation is basically a purchase price, a cash flow, or I should say an NOI, and a sale price. And I'll do like months zero, one, two, you get the idea. And I'll run that out to about 60 because I can. And then I'll play with it a bit. I'll say, well, my purchase price, I don't currently have one. But, I mean, I'll get to that in a moment. My NOIs would be this stream of values. My sale would be my sale price at the end of month 60, which I believe I just had up here somewhere. Cool. And then I just basically sum these three cells together, these three rows together. Now, in this case, I don't have a purchase price. Um, I can solve for the purchase price if I wanted to, but, you know, let, let's do it a couple ways, right? So first thing to do would be to say, let me just jam in a purchase price, like 1650 because you know you got to start from somewhere. If that's my purchase price, and I'll make it negative because you know it should be negative, right? Because it's money I'm spending, not money I'm getting. I could then do an IRR. I could do an equity multiple. I could do whole dollar profit. Here I'll just write that out just so I'm not being, you know. So I'm not being uh, coy about it, I guess would be the best way to put it. So if I do an IRR calculation, there's my IRR. And in this case, it's a teeny number, but remember that that's per month. If I want to annualize it, I'd have to do the monthly to the 12th power minus one, and that would get me per year, okay? 
my equity multiple would be the sum of the future divided by the present uh, with a negative on it because I need to flip the sign. My equity multiple is a 1.74 and then my whole dollar profit is just the sum of everything. And if I do that, there you go, uh, that's what I'm making. Now, of course, the other way to get the purchase price would be to sort of back into it. So if I, for example, had a discount rate, like a target rate, if I wanted to make, I don't know, 14%, then my PV of the future would be at a 14% rate of return, what's that stream of money? Now, of course, that's going to be out of whack because that 14% is 14% per year. If I want to do a monthly number, I need to figure out what that is per month. And again, I would do one plus the annual rate, but this time it would be to the 1 12th power minus 1, which would give me the rate that when compounded 12 times got you back to a 14, which in this case would be 1.1%. If I do this, and I put in that as my monthly rate, we discovered that the NPV is, I'm oh, sorry, the PV is 1.577, or in plain English, if I pay 1.6 million and change, I make 12% of my money. If I pay 1.5 and change, I make 14% of my money. It gives you a sense of what you're making and what you could make if you achieved different thresholds. That's like the world's dumbest valuation. Now, of course, there's a lot here I have not done, right? I have not built in debt. I have not built in, don't mind me as I just format stuff. Um, I'm not built in debt. I've not built in a partnership model. Um, you know, it's pretty freaking primitive. I haven't talked anything about, you know, expense recoveries. Um, you know, we need to add debt. And then also we need to do a levered return analysis. And we also probably have to build in some data tables and all kinds of other fun stuff, you know. That's the great thing about these. You can always add more layers. But in any event, fun stuff, a uh, quick thing to add, and hopefully you found that useful. Um, we'll keep building strength upon strength and adding more things to it. Um, and again, hopefully you found that to be a, uh, a beneficial use of your time. Uh, if you have any questions about this sort of stuff or you feel like sharing the love, uh, feel free to contact me. You've got my email. You've got my web address. Groovy. Until I see you again, Keep building better models.